Hello everybody. Today I'm about to show you this girl group song that I made. And yeah, let's hear it first. Intro. First, here we go. Uh. So bouncy, isn't it? Pre-chorus Build Yeah, I'm standing up today I got one of those tables that lifts you up, you know And post-chorus Two. Uh. About the same after that, so I'm gonna stop right there. Guys, do you like this track? I love it. Uh yeah, there's a lot that I can break out a uh, breakdown with this track. Two things real quick. Number one. Umzig Music community, global community of aspiring producers and top liners. Open right now for registration. We are about to enter to season four. We do lots of fun stuff. Like we do master classes together. We just today we have a master class on top lining. Uh yeah, we're doing song challenges every month, mentorship classes, lots of awesome programs for you to improve on your skills and to be connected with like-minded passionate musicians um <clears throat> also guys my serum pack is out so check it out uh are you ready from intro here we go so obviously you can hear from the very beginning that the the main thing that carries the song is these chords and this once you have core structures i mean there's so many different ways you can do about it but to me this one was built on those chords on that rhythm and it's very bouncy okay so tip number one when you make girl group song try to make it bouncy groovy so that they can dance to they can have fun to how do you do that lots of staccato stuff Instead of doing like bang, bang, like pa, 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 you know, pa, like, like, like the bouncy way that I'm doing things. This creates a lot of ways. Ooh, that's so cool. Okay, how did I do that? Well, I'm using a bunch of Omnisphere for this one. Like, I like don't use Omnisphere as much these days, but here i'm stacking three different omnisphere patches this one it almost has that piano feel to it, right this one more texture but kind of like retro synth this one i wanted to give a little spark okay to uh, and make a lush sounding so these three together and then as you can see in the second half of this intro lots of other instruments are being uh, introduced right here but you see how many movements there are okay so this is a very important thing when it comes to making a good uh, k-pop style girl group songs don't make anything that's boring every single section every single line make it fun L listen to this 
See, even as little as this, just has so many movements, you know? And how did I make this movement? Well, if I didn't have this, it would sound like this. Not as much movement, right? So me applying this tremolo and any, you know, DAW should have one of these. It already has a lot of like fun uh, effect and stereo and cutting some of the high EQ. It was almost like way too high for me. So I cut it that. Okay, so here, check this out. See, even that has so much movement. It's like you're sitting on the beach, you know, like you see the washing, the, the sea wave type of thing. And listen to this bell sound too. Movement, movement. And then even more movement. See, this movement right here. I'm like, no, I'm not going to settle there. I'm going to double it up with this sound right here. So cool. It almost plays that, um, uh, what is it? The riser effect. And look at, listen to this one. This one is a synthesizer, but I'm doing a riser with this, with a synthesizer. Movement and movement. What about this one? Even this. It's like a serum patch that has an effect sound to it. What about this? You see how many movements there are? Yeah, and all that played together. One more time. Intro alone, we can spend so much time breaking this down here. Look at, listen to this. Listen to this uh, clap with the snap sound here. There's a lot of rhythmic, fun element right here. Oh. Love that. Uh, yeah, so I'm just chopping different sounds right here. It, it, so it originally came from this loop right here. And sometimes you just have to listen to different loops and see like, oh, I like that sound. So I'm just going to chop and just use a tiny bit like that. Um, and then the bass right here. Even my bass. Movement. You know, the low pass filter, high pass filter, whatever you call it. It's so confusing. Low pass, high pass, low cut, high cut, whatever. Cutting the high. Okay, and then let's go to the verse. I wanted to show you something right here. Okay, check this out. This groove right here. It sounds really good, right? Programming wise and everything. But to me, the most important guy, this kick right here, guys. That's a very good kick sound. When you have a good spicy kick that is clean, cutting through the mix, and is able to carry the bottom end of a section, you got yourself a really nice kick, but it's actually not as easy to pick the right kick. So you really have to experiment. I don't know how many times I had to change this kick over and over to try to find the better kick. Don't settle for a kick that isn't good. Just constantly look for the right kick and see if you can beat your kick. Nobody's going to push you to make a better sound. Only you can do that, you know? And then right here. Listen to this Hyatt, okay? Together with my snare and kick.
it has that nice. Okay, first of all, it's not just ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta ka ta, or like ta 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 ta. I know we do that a lot in Western pop stuff. There's nothing wrong with that, but when it comes to K-pop girl group stuff, make your highest fun, interesting, groovy, so it doesn't just. Sometimes you calls for that, but a lot of times you're gonna find that if you make your placement of your highest exactly the way you want, often that's going to be better than just doing all the time. So listen to. Listen to that placement of that open hyatt. You know what I'm saying? So how do you do that? Like I, for me, I found this a uh, loop that I liked, but of course I'm gonna chop it up so that I can place it exactly the way I want it, so that I can find the right groove for it. And I'm also adding this. Uh, what is it? Percussion together with this sound that I was talking about. Ooh, that is so awesome. You see how choppy things are? Instead of just letting it loose, everything is like super like cut it. Hold it long. No, you just cut it. And then you're about to hold it. No, you cut it. You know, everything has to have a movement, a transient, and everything has to cut the tail to the exact beat. Because that cutting the tail is gonna make you your song groovier than to just let it fly, right? And then let's go on to the bass. Listen to my bass right here, together with my uh, drums. <laughs> So I'm following the chords, the chords that I played in the verse, but my bass has a lot of fun rhythmic stuff. Stop, and then, oh, oh, let's play from here. I'm hitting and then letting my drums take over, and then hitting again and then letting my drums take over. You're allowing space for the rhythm. Hmm. Everything is about stopping in the right moment. Again. Yeah. So, yeah. Tip number two for you is making your uh, all of your instruments stop in the right time. So, what was number one? Number one was making movement to your tracks so it'll be more dancey, right? Okay, together with the instrument, it sounds like this. See, everything's stopping. But I'm letting the reverb do a little bit of washy stuff to leave a little room for ambience. And then it's moving together. Uh, let's go on to the next section. Oh, we got to talk about this vocal chop because it sounds awesome, right? So this vocal chop, guys, I did a lot of cutting. Um, and it, it used to sound like this. And it just kept going, you know? It just kept going in this style. And again, you cannot just leave it like that. You got to cut it up. Cut it so that it will be bouncy. Cut it so it have movement. So right now, I did... Uh. Nice. Stop again. Hit it. And then move it, movement, movement, movement. Yeah, so together with all the instruments. Okay, and let's go to pre. There is one particular thing that I wanted to mention right here. 
if you hear, there's a lot of cool uh, effect sounds going on right, right here when it starts. Woo! Really cool, right? And then... Building up. I mean, that in itself, it just feels the atmosphere, feels that it makes it big and cool and unique, right? Effect sounds are so important. Ear candy stuff, so important. And look at this bell sound too. And then I have even more risers right here. Doing that build. All these are air candy elements, even this bell sound right here doing ear candy elements right here. And more to come. Even you're gonna find that there's even more ear candy in the next section. So number three, guys. Ear candy is so important when it comes to K-pop girl group stuff. It's just sometimes hidden. And you won't be able to spot right away. But behind almost all like fun girl group, uh, what is that bubble gum like genre? You're gonna always find those ear drum, uh, ear candy stuff. Uh, what about my drums? Let's see my drums right here. Yeah, that build up, and then even more build up, right? With the snare. Did you hear that last snare? I mean, that snare is amazing. It's this one right here. I just feel like that really made this song. Like, listen to this right, this section here. Ooh, those ear candy awesome feels. Those are going to be game changers in your tracks. You have to not just put one loop or one sample and expect that to solve it all a lot of times you're gonna have to mix and match different uh builds different fills and make it really good and combining a couple of things chopping yeah it's very intentional see you you know like you think through it in your head and then you have to execute it uh in your platform by the way if you're enjoying this video Come on, subscribe and like. Let me know what you like about this track so far. Um, because, you know, a lot of you guys are just watching without subscribing because I see it on my analytics stuff. Uh, yeah, so I hope to see you guys uh, subscribe. Right, okay, let's go to the chorus section. Listen, listen to the beat. Check this out. So now in this section, I'm going to let my higher roll a little bit. And let, let it ride, okay? There's a lot of ambient effect that you see. Uh, where is that? L listen to this clap sound. Oh, it's not that. Where is that ambient clap sound? I hear a lot of ambient stuff. Oh, yeah, right here. Snare reverb. This is one of the techniques that I often use whenever I am trying to build a dimension, okay? So when when you're making a big course, it's important that you have punch stuff in the front, but also slightly more reverby stuff in the middle, but also really ambient stuff in the back to create a lot more space. That way, you can create a 3D effect to your, uh, or to your stuff, your stuff. Yeah. So right here. And remember, I had one bass here, right here. But not just that. For the course, I'm even adding this. Why am I adding this? It's got to cut through the mix a little bit more because together it sounds like this. But without this bass, it sounds like this. See, it's a little muddy, you know? It doesn't have that high 
So how do you do that? Well, it's easy. You just have to duplicate this track and find the right sounds to mix and match with what you're doing here to make it good. All right, now let's go to the synth right here. Ooh, there's a lot going on here, right? Lot to break up, a uh, lot, lot to break up, lot to break down here. Okay, first of all, I have my regular synth, which is my chords. But in the synth section, I'm adding this chords right here. Even brighter. Let's make it really cut through the mix, you know. So I'm adding this, but not only that. I want a uh, movement with my pluck, so it goes like this. And together, it sounds like this. Nice. On top of that, I even have this, which is... It's giving a weird, like, movement. And I, sometimes you just have to add one of those weird stuff to make it sound, you know, like, different. And what about this guy? I mean, you gotta be careful with the, this type of sound. Because it has a very, um, how do you say it? Like a retro feel. It's like very JYP stuff. Uh, but it's not going to work with any song. But today, with this song, I'm like, ah, uh, I think I'm going to make it work with this. Make it feel very retro, but cool at the same time. Okay, and finally, my... Still going, you know, with that vocal chop. But with a meow sound. And then lastly, I wanted to show you guys. This guitar line to me is unbelievable. I love this. It just created such a fast movement. And this sometimes these fast movements just really makes you want to dance. So without this, it sounds like. Which is good, but with this... Oh! You know what I'm saying? Makes a huge difference! What if I put this here too? Yeah, it works! Yeah, guys, so these are my um, tips for today We're making girl group tracks. Number one was movement. Number two, make everything choppy, like cut it, you know, make it short, make it danceable. Number three, I don't remember what number three was. You can tell me what I said about number three. I bet it was a pretty good one. Oh, yeah, ear candy. Okay. Um. I hope you like this video. If you liked it, subscribe, like, share with your friends. And again, UMC Global Community, where we learn about K-pop music together. is open right now for registration for check it out. Guys, love you all. I'll see you next time. Peace.